So as we go into that future, Sam Altman had a great quote that I used here in the show in Delhi. And basically it says, the phenomenal ability to think, create, understand, and reason is becoming possible for machines. For, and I don't think that's really entirely true. I think that is a vision that we may have. It's the AI revolution, yes. We may create enough wealth for everyone to have what they need. Well, that is typical Silicon Valley thinking, in my view. Technology doesn't do that. It makes better tools, and if you have more power, you can use the tool better. But if we want that to be the case for everyone, we're going to need a little bit of policy. If we as a society manage it responsibly, that was his last sentence in his press release on this topic. I think this is the key. We're not going to manage it responsibly if it's about money, if it's about profit and growth and power, whether it's China versus Euro versus India versus the US. If it's about to be militarized into an arms race, that is not responsible. And that is what the open letter from the Future of Life Institute is asking for. That's why I think it's so important. And I really think we need to go get behind on this on the same agenda, start a global discussion. And I, I really would love to see an event that focuses on this debate of how we're going to solve this dilemma, purely driven by money, profit, and growth, and greed, and growth, and all of those good things that we need some of those, of course, or driven by people, planet, purpose, and prosperity, which is, of course, also a growth agenda, but a slightly different one. So this machine that can actually picture reality that can understand it and that can become thinking, creating, understanding and reasoning and understand reality, I think that is a scary thought. I don't think that a generally intelligent machine would look very kindly on us. It's kind of like I walk into the forest here and I step in a few ants. I don't notice I'm killing, but that's how I feel about them. And maybe that's how AI or AGI would think about us. That makes me kind of shudder there for a moment. So I think it's really important that we think about what kind of lens have, will we have when we see the world. Will that be the lens of a machine? The machine telling us how to understand the world? I think that's also a very bad idea. Machine creating both text, images, videos, and people, as some people have set forth, not a good idea. Because who will be in charge of this machine content and who will be accountable? Is it Microsoft? Is it Google? Is it Baidu? Is it OpenAI? Well, yes, they're trying, but, you know, they're accountable to the shareholders, the stock market. I think that's a, not a good objective. We need to have something larger than that. If most content is synthetic, if you didn't know it was me and I would just have an AI do my talk, how would he still like me? How will you still know reality? And that is my biggest concern. We won't know reality because we have all the synthetic stuff there and most of it is fake or is made up or is inaccurate or it's put together with a backdoor purpose. That is something I deeply worry about when it's about democracy. Also, of course, I made the point in India and the same point here in Europe. Most of that content currently in the database in the, what is it, 580 billion parameters of chat GP4, GPT-4, that is U.S. content. It certainly is an Indian content, and it isn't in any of the 386 languages of India, or for that matter, in any of the languages in Europe in a deeper way. Most of that content is limited to the background of the internet, which to a large degree, especially in China, of course, has been U.S.-based or English content, but it's enlarging, of course. But and it will learn those things, but it's also something to think about. All the bias and all the information about that stuff is just there in there unfiltered. So I always say the way that machines see the world kind of ignores 90% of real life. It sees the world through data, through data feed, a binary feed, zeros and ones. Humans are not like this. Humans are all sensing. We use in all of our conversations, whether it's here, online, or there in, in meat space in real life, right? We see with our eyes, with our skin, with our heart, with our ears, we, we are all sensing. And, and that is 100% of reality. So that is something I kind of am concerned with. How AI will actually do that in the future is to create the scenario of where we can be all sensing. I think it's doubtful that this is a good idea. A holistic view would entail things that AI knows nothing about. Our spirituality, our... our thinking, our emotions, our feelings to each other, all those things that are part of real world that machines know nothing about. I brought the example, I think this is a great trailer here. You can check it out on YouTube because I can't play the actual song. It's of course, Start Me Up from the Rolling Stones. Most amazing, Mick Jagger is just amazing. And the comparison to what is actually interesting here is not the machine. Right? 
It is Mick Jagger. It is the humanity of what he does. The machine is just one of those things. And learning is not just memorizing. If we deduct from this as a, as a bottom line, right? learning is not memorizing. It's not downloading data. Intelligence is not data processing only. Humans don't think with just the brain. We think with the body. Speaking is not the same as thinking. And large language models are about speaking and about words. And that's not all just the reality. Humans aren't binary. We don't think in zeros and ones and yes, no, yes, no, if this and that. We're a lot more complicated. Real life transcends data. Logic alone is not enough. That is just so crucial to understand that logic alone will not get us there. It will just get us a part of the way. And logic alone is also very dangerous because it can lead us to places where logic rules everything. And it has been said many times that knowledge without wisdom is like water in the sand. I think it's a Guinean proverb, and it's really important because I think also wisdom without spirituality is a dangerous thing. So these things altogether, human life is much more complex than what these machines make us believe. And I spoke about this quite a bit in the conference and all the conversations around the conference in Delhi at the India Digital Fest. You know, how we're compared to machines, we're infinitely more than this kind of super brain that may memorize Wikipedia in two minutes and memorize all of data. But the world isn't just data. It's social, intellectual, kinesthetic intelligence, about eight different intelligences, according to Gardner. And Indian philosophy, of course, is a big part of this. I'll get back to this in a second. Arthur C. Clarke said, let me remind you that information is not knowledge and knowledge is not wisdom. Each grows out of each other and we need them all. Back to the Indian philosophy, the four aspects of mind of the yogi philosophy, which was very interesting to, to witness an uptake on this in, in India when I was speaking. The manas, the chitta, which is a storehouse of memory, that's kind of like the machine, right? The ahamkara, the cells of cells, the buddhi, all of these things that I don't know very much about, but I'm reading about it right now, are a big part of that intelligence. So... At this point, I brought in a special guest and somebody I haven't really taken note of many times before, but I was told by many people it's good to bring in Sadhguru, who is very much revered in India and around the world, for a comment on this. So many of you will be out of your vocation unless you do something that a damn machine cannot do. All of you should hear yourself for this now. You must be able to do something beyond your intellect. Basically, he talks about the same thing, that routine is something that machines can do. Man, machines can do this job of bringing in routine information, whether it's about agriculture or financial advice or you know, filing clerks or any of those things. And routine jobs like building a house with a 3D printer, machines can de definitely do that. Machines can think about how that could all come together very easily. Machines can drive. This is the Zook here, we are becoming Zooks with an X. In San Francisco, the street is blocked off for that. But anyway, automation of unloading a truck, this is Amazon. And here, of course, this kind of shows the website being programmed with Ch uh, ChatGPT. I think this is a demo again from OpenAI. This is one of the OpenAI guys showing how we can build a web page using this app. And, and it's, it's, yeah, it's my joke website. It's not a great website, but then it's programming, right? So bottom line of this, Attaching back to Sadhguru, if you work like a robot, a robot will take your job. And that is kind of what we're looking at. And in large economies like India, lots of people work in routine commodity jobs. 20 million people around the call center economy. 90% of that can and will be automated. we got to think about that. And what does it mean for people when that happens? And which way do we go? Right? And then, of course, if you learn like a robot, you will never have a job or you end up working for the robot. So here we, we see clearly what's happening here with all the details on this list, data entry clerks, customer representatives, bank tellers, retail cashiers, translators, all these jobs are on the list. You know, and the numbers are pretty astounding. Machines and robots will be everywhere in the future. We have to learn what that means, and we have to prepare for this. The future isn't about prediction, as I like to say. It's about being better prepared. And so I often use this kind of Maslow pyramid to where it's quite easily seen what's happening right now is that machines are learning the low, lower part of this pyramid, data, information, logic, intellectual knowledge. Machines can do that and they're developing it by 2030. That will be in full swing. We have to move up this pyramid towards deeper knowledge, tacit knowledge, 
understanding, wisdom, purpose, the human only thing. That's, that's our job. That's where we're going to go. Right? And this chart here on the, on the side from Statista shows quite clearly how India is on top of that list, but China even higher on the list, followed by the U.S. and Japan, Mexico and Germany. We're going to have to really figure out how to create a new job economy based on the fact that routines are being automated. All these things that we see here, human agency, consciousness, imagination, intuition, that is really what we need to distinguish ourselves from, from machines and that's what we have to study.